So, apparently, Alex Bregman had surgery today. Surprise! And it was wrist surgery. So, remember that time where he said that his hand was a little sore? Well, apparently, there's a reason. And Dusty Baker is one of the nominees for Manager of the Year. And Luis Garcia is one of the nomination nominees for Rookie of the Year. Well, we knew that was coming. And we'll talk about that and more on today's Locked on Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H-Town Warehouse on Twitter and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right, and guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen all off-season long. It may be off season, but we're still talking Strohs and you can go and subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a like and go ahead and uh, listen to us on your way to work, on your way home from work. Just listen to audio version on Spotify, Odyssey, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. And I just noticed, uh, Brett, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, we did make the top 200 on Apple. Uh, podcast of all the sports uh, podcasts. So that that's was right. Awesome. Uh, I think that was, um, I think when uh, I first started podcasts, I, I did that, but uh, this is first time since that time. So we're number 186 of all the podcasts. So guys, yeah. keep on listening. Yeah, that's huge. We really appreciate it from Eric and myself. It it means a lot that that you guys and girls come back and we we ask that you not just listen once, listen to us a couple times, share it with your friends, let your neighbors know. I meet people all the time. There's not a single person I don't come in contact with that doesn't hear about the podcast. And that that was an honor. And that's the sports and recreation top like 200. That's huge. We're like up there with the big dogs. Eric, we were the only MLB team in there we were in there the the braves who were like the number one of all the locked on shows for a few days they weren't even in there so that says something about our listeners that says something about people coming back and we appreciate it that's what we do what we do to keep you informed and try to give you the best content that's out there yes so guys let's go and dive right in Uh, i think the big news of the day was alex bregman was apparently had a uh, hurt enough wrist uh, that he had to have surgery on it. And uh, they kind of broke on Instagram and he had a picture of him um, after a surgery and he said, I'm going to come back in 2022 stronger than ever. Recovery is going to be great. And so everybody's like, wait, what happened there? And so it kind of makes you wonder if this is why he struggled um, in the postseason because um, he, it- he just... And so this is what he said. He said, surgery went well. Thank you, everyone, for the well wishes. I'll be back stronger than ever. 2022, focus. Thank you, Astros fans. So he struggled throughout September. He went two for 21 through during the World Series. He he finished the 16-game postseason run uh, nine for 60 with 15 strikeouts and only three extra base hits. So he struggled. He's always kind of struggled in postseason, but he's always had those big moments, those big hits. It just didn't seem like he had those big moments. He still played great defensively, but those big moments were a lack this year. Yeah, I always wondered if he was not seeing the ball well, what was going on. And there was someone on Twitter, I can't remember the guy's name. He said, um, he actually retweeted a tweet that he said, I think, I think Bregman has a broken hand or something's wrong because his his top hand, he keeps talking about it, and it's just not in the right place when he goes to the zone. And this is what I want to know. How does Alex Bregman play through an injury or a possible injury, knowing that he's going to need surgery through the playoffs? Is this something the team knew? Is this another injury that was hidden from the team? Is this something that Dusty Baker knew and regardless put him in the three-hole? Because if, you're, if your top third baseman's injured, you don't put him in the three hole. A, B, you give him some time off. Let Diaz play third. I know Diaz isn't a great defensive third baseman, but at what point, Eric, do these players that lasted twenty four hours? Up, 
Well, you not criticizing Dusty Baker that lasted twenty hours. No, what? What? No, 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 no. I know you mischaracterized my statement. I I said, did he know? And if he knew, then what was he doing? Put him in that position. I look. I'm a coach, and I love players that will play no matter what. That will play through pain. That will that will man up. That will go out there and take one for the team. But when you're taking one for the team that's literally hurting the team, at some point, these athletes, I'm sorry, professional or whatever, say what you will about them, great guys, hard worker. At what point does this stop and do the upper management say, look, guys, you can't hurt us in the playoffs if you're, if you're like, if you're hurt, you need to tell us because this is going to hurt us down the road. I, I just, right. I just don't, I'm, I'm at a loss for, understanding why this happened did it happen in the midst of a game and he ignored it when the uh, adrenaline was pumping and he just did stuff to numb the pain while he was waiting for the season to end did he think it was going to fly over and nothing was going to happen well until he hit that double in that in that game game five eric you know i'm just saying we don't know it is a mystery and he probably won't reveal or the team probably won't say who knew what when but if they knew I'm sorry. Why? Why are we hurting the team and going out and trying to grind it out and being Superman out there? No, that's why you have multiple players. That's why you have other guys on the team to help you right. out. I just, I just hope this is a wake up call. I, I, I just get tired of these players saying, "Oh, I was young and I should have known better." Like Carlos Correa, like he just now started taking care of his body. He said at the beginning of the year, "I've learned how to take care of my body." He's 26. You didn't learn how to take care of your body at 21. Like you don't have professionals around you helping you with that. Why, why are these players having to get injured, injured, injured until they go, Oh, you know what? Maybe I need to take care of this. Maybe I shouldn't play hurt. I just, I hated hearing that Eric, because I want, I desperately wanted Alex Bregman to have a great off season. I mean, I'm sorry, a great postseason. And now we're here in the off season and we hear about this. Yeah. Speaking of off season, uh, according to the Houston Astros, this is the only word we got from the Astros is that he had right wrist surgery today. According to the team, he's expected to resume baseball activities in January and should be ready for the start of spring training. So this is not something that's a, a major. If he's uh, supposed to start baseball activities in January, this was a minor surgery. So it's nothing major. So uh, it's nothing to be worried about. But this was a year of injuries for Alex Bregman in a year where he bulked up and got all physical it, it didn't seem to pay off for him but no still you, um but you, with it being his right wrist and him still be able to whiz those throws across the diamond that shows that he he was probably dealing with some pain but maybe it was just the pain when he was swinging because yeah his swings did not look right he didn't even look right during batting practice from what i saw so uh, we'll see we'll never know what happens but I don't want to dwell on this. Just get better, Alex Bregman. We need you back next year. So I do want to talk a little bit about uh, Dusty Baker and uh, Luis Garcia. Uh, we knew that this was going to happen. Dusty Baker um, is a hundred has 128 wins, 98 wins. Uh, sorry, 128 wins, 98 losses throughout his Astros tenure. Um, so so far, that includes a hundred uh, that 60 game season with the uh, the, the 60 game season last year. So uh, he is uh, competing against um, Tony La Russa. And who's the other guy? It's, um, I have it right here. It's to- and Kevin, no, it's not Kevin Cash. Um, that's last one years. You sure it's not Cora? It's uh, Cora, yeah. I think it's Cora. So it's. Um, I would think it would have to be Cora because those were your three strongest teams at the end. It's definitely not right. going to be Cash. Um, it's more than likely Cora. I would be shocked if it wasn't. I think, honestly, Eric, with as much criticism as I've thrown Dusty's way, I mean, why wouldn't you give it to Dusty Baker? He made right. it to the World Series. The other two guys didn't. Larusa, Larusa didn't manage as well as Dusty Baker did in that ALDS. Actually, was it was it not Cora? No, it's not. It's uh, Kevin really? Cash and Scott Service oh. of the Mariners. Oh, okay. Would well, well, you said you said Larusa? I thought it was. I oh, okay. Was okay. Okay. So the Mariners, Scott Service makes sense because of their he run. took a team that should not and be I in guess, that situation. Yeah. And I guess Kevin Cash, they did win 100 games for the first time in right. Tampa in their history. Okay. So that all makes sense once you work through. I don't know why I thought through. Tony Russo. I guess I thought that they made it playoffs. I don't know where I saw Tony Russo. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah I, was just, 
I was just imagining him running <laughs> to fight well, the Well, you know, I fight. mean, I know, I know how that's it. That to me is an easy mistake to go to right. because in the past he's won that award, and oh, um, that's that's where I saw that. I I will talk about that in a second, but okay, uh, yeah. So that's where I saw that. Um, it, we're talking about um, past award winners, and that's exactly that's where I saw that, so. Uh, but definitely, then Luis Garcia, he's um, facing two rays. Uh, speaking of Kevin Cash, two rays, and you got um, uh, Wander Frank Franco who came out of nowhere. I mean, everybody knew he was coming. Don't get me wrong. But uh, he, he kind of came out of nowhere. Then uh, Randy Arena, the guy right. who came out in, a, in the playoffs in 2020 season. So he's got some uh, rough, some tough company, uh, especially for uh, Franco. He's uh, he, Franco. Uh, he's he's a guy that's really got a lot of talent. We saw that firsthand uh, in the playoffs. So this is definitely a team that the oh, not in playoffs, but at the end of the season when they're trying to get to the playoffs. So oh, this yeah, is a definitely. this is a team that uh, the Rays are a team that's filled with young talent. I don't know who's going to win it. Probably not Garcia, but yeah, uh, Garcia. Yeah. I, I, I really doubt a, a pitcher wins it over two offensive guys. I don't right. think Wander Franco has enough service time compared to a Rosarina. I think right. with the Rosarina playing the full season, that bodes well in his favor. Now I think if Franco comes up at the beginning of the year and he plays all year, he definitely could beat him out. That kid is an absolute tank. Right. He has he is a he's a five tool player. Right. So uh, I don't know who you, you bet on, but uh, betonline.ag, I, I bet you they have some uh, stats on this, some odds. So talk to us a little bit about betonline.ag. So we're back in better than ever with the new web interface to start the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to our new updated website. Um, on your mobile device or desktop and sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use a promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game begins. Yeah, to kind of close off on that little segment, uh, Garcia led AL rookie pitchers with uh, war, 3.1 wins, innings pitched with 155, one-thirds innings pitched, strikeouts with 167, and that was a second highest strikeout total by a rookie in clubs, uh, Astros club history. So this guy is legit. He did kind of um, slow down at the end. He did have some ups and downs in the playoffs, but overall – this uh, this guy showed a lot of potential for the Astros in the future. So um, some other news is that the Astros did pick up the officially pick up the option on Yuli Gurriel for eight million dollars. We already knew that, and they uh, they also announced that they picked up the option uh, the option vested for Ryan Presley for 2022. I believe it's 10 million, but we already yes. knew that. Uh, they also added four players to the from the 60 day IL. They had to be returned back to 40 man roster. Kent Emmanuel, Tyler Ivey, Rafael Montero, and Freddy's Nova. So those guys are added back to the 40 man roster. Uh, we'll have to talk on a later podcast how many spots are open on the 40 man roster when we talk about what the Astros' needs are for the offseason. But um, there are some uh, players that are now no longer in the uh, minor league system. And That's right. uh, one of them, I'm so glad is gone. So y'all can get off my back and here are who are now uh, minor league free agents because um, they've decided to become free agents. Robel Garcia, John uh, Oakzak. Oak I don't know how you say his name. Mike, Michelangelo uh, Sierra, Drew Batero, uh, Riley Farrell, CJ Hinojosa, Michael Kelly, and Jacob Wilson. So Jacob Wilson. Tyler uh, White uh, look like peace out. Yeah, Robel and Garcia, um, peace. yeah, I think we need a ten second moment of silence for Rebel. No, no. That you, and you want thank that. you. That's right, <laughs> Robel Garcia. The era, the end of an era, um, and in the arms of the angel from that pet commercial comes to mind. I wish I had it on my phone because I would so play it for you right now. I know it is with great sadness that you have to announce that, but Robel has basically, he has, he, listen, we have let, we have let the bird fly the coop. 
We are letting him spread his wings professionally, and he will fly. So fly Robel into the Major League Baseball world for as far as your bat will take you, and Eric will forever champion your cause. No, but for real, the Houston Astros, um, actually, you had mentioned the 40-man roster. They have 38 men on the 40-man roster okay. currently, so they do have two spots o- um, open. They did send qualifying offers to both Justin Verlander and and Carlos Correa, okay. Um, and one of the if we're if we're talking about late late breaking news, you know Justin Verlander, he threw in front of about twenty scouts, and he was touching ninety seven, and the they were all saying he's ready, like he's ready to go. So he Justin only threw Ver- twenty five pitches, so no, he, he did. did not have pitched ten days ago. No, no and yeah, that's, yeah. that's I'm not a, talking yeah. to you. I'm talking to our listeners. I know, I know. Our I know. locked on Astros family. No, he could not have helped and started. Well, everybody, yeah. everybody's pondering that. Well, yeah. why why didn't he help us in the World Series? Number one, the Astros wouldn't have let him because the Astros saved about seventeen million dollars with him not pitching at all. Two, why would you? Why would you? Do that when you're already getting paid $33 million to rehab. You're not going to do that. You're not going to put your body under that. And the doctor said he wouldn't even be ready to pitch. So, you like, none of those scenarios would have happened. Those are probably the same people that say A.J. Hinch needs to come back. A.J. Hinch isn't coming back. He's gone. See ya. A.J. Hinch is in Detroit. He's probably going to retire in Detroit. He's going to be there for a long time. Justin Verlander may be there. Um, Carlos Correa may go to Detroit. I'm just saying it might look a little weird to look at the Detroit Tigers and see three former Astros over there. Now, Justin Verlander, it's not an impossibility, but if nobody's willing to offer him the big money, you know, I guess he's got, you know, he's got a certain amount of time to accept the qualifying offer. But if he, if he puts his, if he puts his fishing pole out there to test the waters, he may find out, Eric, that he's not going to get that money that he's wanting, the 35 or 32 for a year or 29 for a year. That qualifying offer might be the best thing. Like a one-year qualifying offer, prove it deal, he comes back, then boom, he could end his career in Detroit like he wanted to. I would love to see Justin Verlander back. I don't know if the clubhouse would, but um, Justin Verlander would be welcome addition to any team, I think, next year. All right, so I'm looking at uh, Sports Track, and I was looking at the Astros free agents, and uh, Zach Greinke does not qualify for a qualifying offer because he already got one before. But uh, I'm looking at his 2021 salary and their projected AAV for the 2022 season. Guess what it is for Zach Greinke? Yeah. No, I don't. I have no idea. It's only nine million. <laughs> So based on his, his, I guess his digression, they're not expecting him to get a a lot. So going from 35 million to 9 million. So if I don't think, uh, I think Zach Rinky will get a little bit more than 9 million, but that's just his market value. He'll probably, he'll probably get about a 16 to $18 million deal. I think for a year. I mean, I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't take a flyer on Grinky for 16. I think somebody will overpay to get Grinky just based on his status. But, um, so, uh, I know that Carlos Correa, um, their, at their market value for him is 26 million. So the Astros are willing to pay him, uh, 32 million, whether 32 you, to 35. Yeah. 35, no matter which depending on who you believe. And it, Mark Berman doubled down on his, his belief that rumors, uh, the, the 10th highest salary ever to pay to any baseball player. So, um, so yeah, that's, so Berman is like, you know, uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna try to trump me. I I'm, I'm the, I'm the lead uh, sports guy around here. Randy, <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't know if there's a beef there. I just, I just know that what that what Randy tweeted didn't really seem to have as much backing as what Berman tweeted. Like I right. said, I think, like I think that's a frequency thing. Nobody's yeah. talking about it, but Randy is going on on live TV talking about it, um, or so he's putting it on his Twitter. Well, did, um, like if if you hear something and you go on this, I mean, that's just kind of the same thing. So it's his outlet. So channel two is his, his outlets. Channel 26 is Berman's outlet. So here's the thing. The, the bottom line is Carlos Correa is going to get a handsome offer from the Astros. They're not going to insult him. And I'm not even going to talk about the other fan base that keeps talking about Carlos Correa because it's nauseating at best. But Carlos Correa, at the end of the day, 
is going to take the most money offered to him. Make no bones about it. He loves right. Houston. He loves his city. But if he sees a 35 to $38 million payday, he is going to walk. And you know what? Every one of you listening would do the same freaking thing. Right. So don't criticize a man for going somewhere and making the most money because you would do the same thing. If you made 100 k at your work and someone offered you 200 k but then someone, someone you know, but with the company- taxes, right? Do what? Taxes, taxes are more in New York than in uh, or taxes, California. Okay, but here's the deal. Here's here's what debunks that a little bit. The players pay income tax on where they play those games. So they so he pays a state income tax. I know, but what I'm saying is is whenever he goes to a state, whether you're in New York or Texas, if I play 20 games in California, those 20 games are getting taxed at the California tax rate where I'm playing. But if you, so, if you go sign with the Giants, where are you going to be playing mostly? Well, like half of your games will be at home, right? Exactly. Well, no, but you'll be playing the Dodgers. You'll be playing the Padres. Oh, true. Well, so yeah. Be, well, I don't. I don't. I don't see the Giants offering him. I think. I, th I think Crawford. No, I'm just using there. an example. Yeah. I'm yeah, just example. giving okay. you an example. So, um, and I'm talking. The reason why I kind of brought that up is um, Astros, not Astros. Sorry, Anthony Castro Vince. Uh, he's a writer for MLB.com, and he always does this prediction. And he does the like top nine, uh, top free agents where they land. And I want to kind of uh, highlight three of uh, the people. Yeah. And uh, just kind of, I want y'all to go ahead and either through the chat. Um, uh, on YouTube or tweet us or whatever you want to do, but just tell us your thoughts. So he said that Carlos Cray will sign with the Tigers. Uh, it's easy to connect uh, him to AJ Hinch and right. they have the money to spend and they are, are almost ready to compete. Uh, we saw that they, they kind of turned around in the second half of the season. And so maybe that um, he could be their Alex Rodriguez to kind of, uh, be their well bad example but you know what i mean they're 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 face of the franchise to kind of lead them to their their future so that's what he said he said um the 27 year old Kraya is young enough to be an impact player throughout their next content contention window so uh there, there's still some growing pains ahead of them but um they they showed some life so uh that's one of the things he said then he said, uh, number three example, he said the Giants will sign both Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. Hmm. So that was a big move. And so um, I Verlander, think the Dodgers and, keep Scherzer. But. And so that would be a big, that would be a big up. I mean, what was the issue they asked the Giants had last year? It would probably the starters because definitely, I mean, they're, they're great. But just imagine with the Giants hitting. And just add a Scherzer and a Verlander, a healthy Verlander to that rotation. That that, oh, that team would be, be dynamic. That would just I mean it was already what good if, team. Now I don't I don't know if the sky's the limit with Detroit, but they've you know they've got Mize, they've got um, they've got Scruble, they've they've got some really good young pitching. What if Scherzer and and Justin both went back to the Tigers? I mean, I mean that's that's not. Yeah totally crazy i mean with these predictions also with carlos correa if the tigers offer him 37 or 38 he absolutely goes to detroit they've they've got some young talent there they've got some really good young hitters um you know they got spencer torkelson they've got um they've got um badu they've got all these all these guys that I think have a promising future coming up for them. And I think they got the right person at the helm, Eric, to do it because AJ Hinch is the ultimate cerebral player manager, psychologist. And who else do you want leading that club yeah. in a familiarity, like you said, with Carlos, a familiarity right. with the clubhouse atmosphere that he creates. And the final one was Trevor Story will sign with the Houston Astros. And he said they're probably not going to meet Carlos Correa's asking price. And if you're worried about the Coors Field effect, well, if he's going to play, he's going to suck away from Coors Field. Well, um, the, Crawford, the Crawford boxes are perfect for him because he yeah. can just take aim from that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that being a thing. So um, Trevor's story to the Astros, if we lose Correa. I'm okay with that. 
Yeah. So I, I actually agree with most of those. I don't know necessarily think that the giants will take on both Scherzer and Verlander, but um, that, this is just one guy's prediction. We have yeah. no idea what's going to happen. And, but that would be a bold move for the giants. That's the giant saying, look, we want to go all in and that's their way of going all in. So speaking of going all in, um, Let's go ahead and go all in with some of our mailbox. Uh, so um, some mailbag. So I'm going to go ahead and put some mailbag questions up here and let's go and address these. Okay. So right. the first one is up here by Keegan. So Keegan says thoughts of uh, Verlander possibly coming back. Yeah, I think we um, answered that earlier. It is a possibility. I don't know that it's probable, but it is possible if he's willing to take the qualifying offer. I think if um, I mean, I know that they said he's ready. They said he looks good. He looks like he's ready. Uh, he with the whole off season, he can build himself up. I know that's what spring training is for. But yeah, I think that he can be healthy by the start of spring training. He can be definitely a starter in this situation. So I don't think he has to rebuild his trade value. Yes, he hasn't. He's pitched one game really in two years. But I think somebody like Justin Verlander. He can probably get a two-year deal, maybe a three-year deal from some team. Some team like the Giants will do it. But if he wants to just say, "Hey, I'm not getting the I'm not getting the offers I want," maybe people are a little wary of uh, signing a 37-year-old pitcher. But um, let me just go ahead and sign with the Astros and get pitch one more year. They need another pitcher. Anything can happen. I just yeah. don't see it happening. I I think that he'll be like, "Look, this is my last chance to get." a multi-year deal from year, from here on, it'll probably be one year deal. So Keegan, I'm, I'm going to say 33% chance. Oh, okay. Man, you put a percentage on there. Okay. Um, so, uh, John Ponzi from Lake Jackson asked, asked us through Facebook. Um, what are our thoughts on how the Astros pitching will be affected with Brent Strom leaving? Um, I think Brent Strom leaving when he made his final statement to the media um, was basically him telling us that the guys and who is who is led by Murphy and Miller have the reins held down. I really think that those other pitching coaches were more instrumental, Eric, than what a lot of people think. I know Brent Strom is the wizard, the guru. But he is a teacher as well. And so I believe he gave those reins to those guys because he was afraid of those guys being cherry picked. So apparently there was rumors or talks about teams going after them. And that's why he left. I don't know that it'll, it may be affected a little bit, but I think they've learned enough under Strom where I think the training wheels are off now. And these are the next guys coming up. At the same time, you can you can learn as much as you can from your ment mentor, but you still can't replace what he can do. Like he can see what a pitcher is doing and just go out there and say, hey, uh, you, you got to fix this. And so did Miller and Murphy uh, learn that? I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Brent Strom's comments lead, to, lead you to believe that that's what happened. Yeah. There's no way that Brent Strom – did every single thing. Now he was the one that went out there. He was the one that made the visit, but in the training, in between the days, in the bullpen sessions, all that stuff, those guys were instrumental from what I understand, right. everything I've heard Brent Strom say. So we got basically the same question, uh, from two different people. So, um, um, we have, I'm gonna go ahead and read this one. So if, if the Astro, if they don't sign Carlos Correa, what players should they go after to replace him? And that's basically what Arginius said as well. If the, in case Correa isn't coming back, um, how do you how do you think the shortstop position will be filled? So I really think I re if you if you want to ask me who I think it's going to be if Correa is gone, I really think Story is the answer. I think that he's he's a native Texan. I think that he's not going to cost near as much as Correa would. He's coming off of a not a bad season, but a down season compared to what he's uh, shown much. in past. He he's got some speed. He plays great defensively. He is the almost Correa type player. He may not be the all around player that Correa is, but he is still a dynamic player. So if he, if you don't get him, the step down me. I don't think you're going to go out and get uh, Mark uh, Simeon. I think that he is no. he's he's a uh, top three in the MVP votes. 
I, I think he's priced himself out of the mark, the Astros market. And I, I, I just think, don't think I, I think, think he's too old too. I think there's a lot more risk involved with Simeon, Eric. I don't, I don't think Simeon, I think Simeon's playing above where he would be able to sustain where like a Trevor story, I think has more upside and has more going up than Simeon does. I think Simeon's kind of peaked to be honest with you. Um, story, I do like it. And I know a lot of people don't want to put the whole Pena at shortstop thing, but if you don't sign a, a if you don't sign a big time free agent to replace him, you've got Diaz, you've got Pena, you got Pedro Leon, you've got a you've got a litany of guys that you can run run through that spot until you find someone who is comfortable. So I think Trevor Story is the most likely. Um, Seager, I think, is going to the Yankees because they need another left handed bat. Carlos Correa, if he doesn't come here, is either a Tiger or a Rangers player. I think next season, and you, God, I, I don't want to go. I don't want Correa to go to. I mean, it makes sense for him to go to Ireland. Well, I mean, they got the money. It's it's still in Texas. His wife's from Texas, and someone's like, his wife has nothing to do with this decision. Bullcrap. These players' wives, these players, they all make these decisions together. Don't be don't be fooled by their bravado. So let's move to the next question. Will the Astros use the money they have to bring in a big game pitcher? Another question from John Ponzi of Lake Jackson. Are, are they going to use that money for that, Eric? Uh, it depends. I mean, technically, they have a full rotation. If you look at Jay Cotarizzi, uh, even with Zach Rinke gone, you can always move in uh, Christian Javier into the rotation. Uh, you're going to have to give Force Whitley if he's uh, eventually, once he's healthy, you're going to have to give him a shot. Um, there are, there are, I mean, there are options. It's not like the cat, the cabinet is barren. You do have options. Yes. You lost a Zach Rinke. Um, but yes, I think their first choice is to bring back the devil, you know, in Justin Verlander. Um, so you want to get him. And if you can't get him back, then you want to go out and get somebody else. Uh, so yeah. who's that Robbie Ray, uh, I said it right, right. Uh, he's he does have the uh, qualifying offer attached to him, so you have to give up a pick. But if you lose the other two guys, you'll get two picks back. So it's kind of like trading one for one. So that's so something know, to look at. So I know Rodon is a real possibility, even on a one year, like twenty five million dollar deal. I wouldn't mind having someone like him. There are other pitchers out there, and so the Astros, I think, do. I, I Eric. I don't. I don't see how they how they don't even even with the guys they have. I don't see how they don't go out and use this money for a pitcher. They need him, which brings us kind of into the next question from Astros twenty twenty one, Mister. Um, are there any pitchers like Noah Syndergaard that they would give a one year prove it option to? He's the one guy that I would give a one year prove it option because he hasn't pitched hardly any the last two seasons. And how much risk would you be taking on a guy who's a seasoned veteran who has had a lot of success in the biggest city in baseball, New York, as a Met? Why wouldn't you do that if that's a possibility? I mean, if if he's healthy and if he can go and if he's at full strength, you could get him at a pretty discounted rate compared to what you would get a Rodon or somebody else. Um, I'm going to totally disagree with you there. He did get a qualifying offer from the oh, Mets. So why okay, would I didn't he, know that. Why would he take a one-year deal with the Astros for less when he can make 18.4 million to Well, but you wouldn't him? you you wouldn't give him you wouldn't give him less than than what was offered on the on the qualifying offer, would you? No, I mean, no, that same yeah, I mean, but uh he he wouldn't know that. So he would be taking a risk. So he has till the 16th to make this okay. decision and the Astros are not going to be knocking at his door saying, Hey, we're going to give you 18.5 million to come. Right. Well, no, I'm just saying he's, he's the only guy that I know that's out there that, that needs like, a, I don't, I don't really know all the pitchers that, that would have prove it deals attached to him other than someone like that. Someone who's been dealing with injury. Um, but you know, do you want to sign a guy to a one year deal or do you want to sign a two or three year guy? Because here's the thing. Kendall Graveman, it's predicted that he's going to sign with the Astros. Like I think it's like a three-year, sixty. What did I see, um, forty-six million or fifty-six million dollars, something. It wasn't that much. I can't remember the figure, but there are people predicting that Graveman 
will sign with the Astros. So you've got these relief pitchers that you've got to bring back. So you've got to put all this into the mix when you're talking about who are they going to sign? How much money are they going to sign? Um, you know, we do appreciate all your questions here for the mailbag segment. And um, we appreciate you interacting with us on Twitter. Uh, you want to hear something funny? Michael Conforto actually declined his um, qualifying offer. Interesting. So he, he wants to test uh, free agency. He feels like he can get more out there. Uh, so I think that um, I really think that Thor feels like, um, especially he hasn't pitched very well in the past two years. He's kind of in the same situation Justin Verlander is, but he's been more injury prone. Uh, Verlander has shown that he's been pretty reliable, but uh, Thor, on the other hand, is not. So, yeah, th there's a lot for us to discuss, and uh, we're, we, we could keep on going forever and ever, but I think that we're going to go ahead and end the podcast right now. So hopefully Luis Garcia gets some love, but I don't think he's going to get the rookie of the year. I think Dusty Baker deserves some love for being the um, manager of the year, uh, for doing what he did with the Astros, but I think it's going to go to Kevin Cash again probably for – what he's done with the Rays, and I wouldn't be surprised if Scott Service gets it because look at how that that team was not supposed to win, and look at they almost made the playoffs and uh, yeah. with that with that team, a team that wasn't supposed to win. So um, we'll talk about some more about the the we got some more predictions on the next podcast, and we'll talk um, so, uh, some more about the Astros offseason. And thank you for always subscribing to Locked On Astros podcast on YouTube. Keep on continuing listening. Keep on liking us, and um, we'll be back tomorrow with another Locked On Astros podcast. Go Strokes.